Anatomy of a Scandal Ending Explained This limited series that was released on Netflix tackled a difficult, sensitive subject between a parliamentary intern and an MP with the court case that surrounded it. So what happened at the end? Well, let's find out. Here is Anatomy of a Scandal Ending Explained. Just to let you know, this video will contain spoilers. The show centered around MP James Whitehouse being on trial for the assault of Olivia, who was an intern that had an affair with James whilst working there. But within that time frame, she accused James of assaulting her, which then led us to pick up at this point where he's on trial for the accused crimes. As the show goes on, we saw in the final episode that the jury sadly found James not guilty of the crime that he was accused of, and it only took the jury a mere matter of a few hours to come to their decision on the matter. The crime that took place was put down to a moment that occurred within their time together, and that Olivia had essentially let it go this far and go to trial due to the fact that she was deeply hurt, sad, and annoyed at the fact that the relationship between the pair was no more, and she essentially wanted to get revenge and make him pay. This, however, couldn't have been further from the truth. Even though in a court of law we saw that James was found not guilty of the crime, he did in fact commit it and we found out that this wasn't actually the first time that he'd done it to somebody. He had assaulted somebody else when he was younger and at university. He had assaulted Sophie's university friend Holly whilst she was drunk. This led Holly to drop out of university and to start a new life, which led her to also change her name in the process. She changed her name to Kate and got the surname Woodcroft after marrying her husband. This led to the revelation for Sophie when she started to realize that she was the same person who was fighting for James's conviction in the courtroom. After the case and trial was complete, we saw Sophie speak with James in order to get the truth from his mouth and make sure that he was in fact not lying. He denied the allegations of assault, but surprisingly, he didn't shut down Olivia's telling of the story, in the sense that she said no when he made a move on her, but he decided to continue anyway, essentially admitting his guilt. Once Sophie heard this from James, she decided that she wanted to leave him and take the kids away with her, due to the fact that she couldn't bear the thought of him after the crimes that he committed and the fact he got away with it. An injustice had essentially been served, and she didn't believe he should be walking free. Kate and Sophie reconnected to go over what occurred between James and Kate back when they were at university, and after Kate explained, and now knowing what he did with Olivia, Sophie then took the side of her. From here, Sophie made it clear that she had a way of making James pay for what he did, even though it wouldn't get him convicted of the crimes he committed against Olivia and Kate. There was something she could leak and go to the press or police with. She mentioned how there was a cover-up for him using drugs and also his involvement in the death of one of the Libertines which is a club for wealthy students who are studying at university. From there, right at the end, we saw James being arrested and escorted by the police, which meant that the story was definitely released and that they went to the police. Although he may not and may never be convicted of the crimes that he committed against Kate and Olivia, he may spend some of his future behind bars for something else. So, there you have it. The ending to Anatomy of a Scandal Explained. What did you think of this show? Leave a comment down below. And don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time.